And this week on Winchester and Drury's Natural Born. It is the last night of youth season. Not ideal situation, but November 3rd, you gotta go make it happen. Yet. We've been in here a half hour and already in two really, really nice spots. My lord, brother. The second day of gun season. Is that what you asked me to do? <laughs> this week on Winchester and Drury's Natural Born, we'll be heading to the land of Lincoln to join up with the dynamic duo Kyle Lamore and JJ Kaliser as they head in after some great Illinois whitetails, including a 177 inch giant named Stickers. Give me some breath at this awesome man. But before we get to all that, Kyle had one mission he hoped to complete before any other, and that was to get his daughter Avery on her very first deer. All right, what are we doing today? Today we're gonna practice shooting so I can go deer hunting because I've never been hunting, except for I have been turkey hunting, but right when I shot at him, he moved. The so. turkey moved? You didn't get him? Nope, but I did get a feather. <laughs> crossbow time. This time though, no crossbow. What are you gonna use? The muzzle loader. You're using the muzzle loader. How many pellets? One. One pellet. So no kick, right? Right. One pellet, 50 grains. We'll see what happens. How'd you look? All right, youth season Illinois, here we come. Well, going into the fall of 2020, we've got a couple goals in mind. Personally, my own goal is to always kill the biggest deer on the farm. That's a no-brainer, right? But an additional goal this year was to get my daughter, my nine-year-old daughter, her first deer. It is the last night of youth season. This is hunt number two. The problem with Illinois youth season, it's the middle of October. We got a lot of strikes against us. One, it's kind of that approaching that lull. Two, the first time we hunted, how hot was it? Like 80 degrees. 80 some degrees, too hot. We saw a few does way too far away. Today, a little front came in and it's better. It's at least out of the Northwest. It's 70, 71 degrees. Hoping somebody tonight gets on its feet. And if it does, what's the plan? Then I'm gonna kill it. You're gonna kill it, that is the plan. Now, if we're heading to my buddy's place, actually. He has got a farm not more than two, three miles away from me. But for whatever reason, the number of deer on this farm is just through the roof. But we don't care if it's a doe, small buck, big buck, whatever stands out in front of us at 50 yards or less, it's gonna be in trouble. October the 12th, arguably one of the toughest seven day stretches of the entire year to deer hunt, especially when it's 70 degrees, 80 degrees, but it's youth season, it's Illinois, it's Columbus Day. And we got the youth out. We got my buddy Manchel behind the camera. We're just hoping some deer cooperate. It's still hot, right? It's a little bit better. It's at least out of the Northwest. It's about 70, 72, so, so that's the plan. We're hoping our first deer tonight at nine years old, because it was dead. It took me, I think I was 17 or 18 till I got my first deer, so she's trying to show me up tonight. We'll see. We went out there, sat out there, two hours, last two hours of light, and probably an hour before dark, here come two does, and they're well within range. And the old nanny doe, she put her head up and she knew something wasn't quite right, and they slipped back off the plot just as quick as they got on it. Fortunately for us, fast forward 20 minutes, and here comes another doe, or maybe the same doe out again. Smoke. I don't know. Did it feel good? 
Yeah. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Wow. They were all nervous. So the dough gives us all the time in the world. Takes her time, slowly squeezes it off, and all we see, white smoke. Muzzle loader, that south breeze pushed that smoke right back in front of us. I had felt she had hit it and hit it pretty solid. So we are cautiously optimistic that our first deer is down. Well, we're gonna go take a look while it's still daylight and see if we can find any blood or anything, but see what happens. We we'll give it a few minutes, maybe 30 minutes or so get out we're just going to push up to the end of that biologic food plot and start looking for blood didn't take long at all and we found some pretty good blood quite a bit yeah so we start to take up the trail we get off that food plot probably 75 80 yards and there lays a big old doe it's avery's first doe so now 2020 nine years old hold her up there you nice. go gold number one of the 2020 fall hunting season has just been checked off October the 12th, the last night of Illinois youth season. Illinois youth season is always tough. It is in that time frame of October that's just about the lull. And October the 12th was lucky. Why? Because it's actually my birthday number, so it's always been my lucky number in general. She's nine years old. Took dad till he was 18 to kill his first deer. So we are off and rolling. First Illinois tag has been punched. Hopefully a future hunter. Well, the 2020 season is off and it is rolling, buddy. Well, up to this point in our season, it's been a tad warm. We're excited to flip that calendar over to November and hope for some cooler temperatures. Okay, kids, here's the sitch. And by sitch, I mean situation. This is a spot that is a great farm we have probably three or four, maybe five different targets ranging from anywhere from 130 inch deer to upwards of 180 inch deer. <clears throat> and for November 3rd, probably gives us our best chance of actually catching a buck, maybe trying to get with a doe. The problem with this farm is it all lies to the north from our access point and any south, you know, southerly flow wind is terrible for access. Except when we're looking on Onyx Maps, there is one place where we could put a south-southwest wind in, and I think into our favor, where we would cast our wind right over the creek beds. The problem is it's way off the beaten paths and all the scrapes that we've been seeing for signs. So in this situation, I think what we're gonna do is put a decoy out in hopes that we can get whatever resident deer do come out into the field right in our laps, and then we'll go from there. We're gonna hang and hunt. That's right, it's like 70 something degrees. Not ideal situation, but November 3rd, you gotta go make it happen. So we'll see what happens. So Kyle and I get all nestled in, and I'm not kidding, it's probably 10 or 15 minutes, and we've got does and bucks screaming right by us. They come into our decoy setup and create a bunch of havoc and a bunch of noise. Hardly had time to settle in. We have got deer screaming across our decoy setup. You cannot beat that. I mean, that was 25, 30 yards. And he's nosing that. If we can get a mature buck to do that, we are golden because our wind is going right over that creek right now. And we are getting down to that golden hour. And honestly, it, it is warm, but you never know. November 3rd, our fingers are crossed. I really like the setup. I just, I just hope that some mature deer are on their feet in this kind of warm. It's not but a few minutes later, we're getting into that magic hour of light and Kyle taps me on the shoulder and says, shooter coming. You just smoked a stud. I think he went down right there, buddy. Hold on, listen. <laughs> I cannot believe that. That happened so fast, man. It was one of those situations that was kind of old school. 
I didn't know who the deer was, and this was this new 40 acres, and it kind of reminded me back when he and I hunted public ground, that we would just go kind of get in our climbers, we would set up there, and we really had no idea what deer might be coming through there. We weren't using trail cameras much at that time, and it was kind of exciting just not to know what might show up. Well, that's how this situation was, and it was kind of an old refresher, if you will. We call this set Bulletproof, it's brand new. It was a hang and bang tonight. And the reason we did it is we've got these south winds for the next seven days. I think he's down right there. Look good, right? I, I couldn't tell, but it sounds it's so good. close. Mule but, kick. Yeah, that's what I saw. I mean, look right in there. We climb down, kind of get all our stuff back to the truck and we're just like, I, I think this was good. We look at the footage on the LCD screen, we like the shot, so it wasn't very long. We go right back into that timber, we find blood. It took us a minute, but we, it's so thick in here, we finally got on blood. We had a coyote come within 10 yards of us just a minute ago, that's how fast they're on us. We get to the, the brink of the ridge where the, it falls, started falling the creek, and I look down and I can see him right there at the bottom of the creek. I was getting a little worried, buddy. You're down, give me some. Right there. In the creek? Nope, right here. Oh, yeah, boy. Nicely done. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Being the area was so thick, well, we got that deer out of there quick, and we just waited till the next day. We put it in Kyle's freezer at his barn. We brought him out and got to look at him a little closer. Well, evening of November 3rd proved to be a good one. We're on a Lease of ours that's about 90 acres and sets up poorly for a south-southwest wind. So we had no idea really what we were gonna do. So we decided on a hang em and hunt em. Got our sets, got our muddy sets, got our muddy stick, got it all set up, put a decoy out in the field and it was just enough to create a little bit of stir up amongst the local deer. We had a couple does come in, a couple bucks come in. One buck really liked it and created such a ruckus that this boy heard it down in the creek bottom and wasn't gonna allow that first available doe to come into estrus without him knowing about it. So he stepped up from the creek bottom. Kyle taps me on the shoulder and says, shooter coming, and by that time he was already 15 yards. I sent the rage on its way by the mission crossbow, which is the first harvest for me by the mission crossbow, but also the earliest ever in November, I've harvested a mature deer. So you never know, 70 degrees doesn't mean the rut's gonna stop. So we got out there, got after it, and fortunately for me, it paid off. Give a Shout out to my partner behind the camera for being there with me. Um, hopefully it is a testament to what the season will bring for us. Here's to never missing a day of hunting camp. Because with DeerCast, you can take camp with you all season long. Get ahead of your game. Natural Barn is brought to you by Analogics Outdoors, Scent Crusher, Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's, Reconyx Game Cameras, Tracker Off-Road, Leupold Optics, Cold Steel, Mossio Camouflage, GearCast, Matthews Archery, and presented by Winchester Ammunition. What a season so far for the deadly duo of Kyle Lamore and JJ Kleeser. Thanks to Kyle's daughter Avery getting her first deer, Kyle's already accomplished one goal for the season. Hold her up, there you uh -huh. go. And with JJ harvesting a buck on their new lease, check off another accomplishment. Next up, it's Kyle's turn, and he's after a monster Illinois buck they call Stickers. Well, the 2020 season is off and it is rolling, buddy, so far, one of my two goals has been reached. My daughter Avery killed her first deer ever. The second goal of the season is to always kill the biggest deer on your farm. Usually that's easier said than done, but this year we're feeling kind of good about it. We've got a really good deer calling them stickers because obviously he's got a couple kicker points on him and he has been a homeboy. We had a great encounter with him last year in the timber and passed him and that's, that's really, really hard to do where we're at because we're hunting small tracts of land and there's not a lot of management, but we knew at the time he needs another year. He could be a superstar, and if given one more year, our gut would definitely pay off. Well, it is November the 7th, and we are tucked into one of our favorite little spots on this farm. You know, we are in the heart of the oak timber. We're on a ridge, and it's just beautiful white oaks, and there's some pin oaks mixed in, and some red oaks. It's a spot we do not crash into on our farm, except for about a 10-day period. From November 1st to the 10th, it, it's all hands on deck. We're not afraid to push into it because we know that's kind of the bedroom and that's where they want to be. They're out there searching for does. Been in the tree about a half hour. Just got the coat on as soon as we climbed up. We had a great deer I could hear over here chasing. You know, probably a two year old, maybe a three year old. He came right in point blank here, 30 yards. We could hear a grunt behind me, right in front of JJ to the right and looked and thought, uh oh, it looked pretty good deer. 
he was coming into the grunt. This guy is way, way too close. He gets a wind of us or he caught something he didn't like. He starts to book her out here and of course he takes that buck with him. But nonetheless, November 7th, that's why you're in the tree on November 7th because we've been in here a half hour and already two really, really nice bucks. So fingers are crossed we can find his daddy today. It's been light about an hour or two and the weather's good. And all of a sudden, turn to my side and we see a doe coming and she is coming fast. Behind her, just as exactly what you envision and dream about on November the 7th, a buck and a big buck right on her tail. I feel that bolt leave the crossbow, I heard tink. And that tink sound is never a good sound because you know it has caught something. In this case, it caught a branch and it deflected the arrow. Not once, but I think it hit something twice. Well, the goods and bads of it is. The bad is it, the bolt has hit the deer, not where I wanted. It was way up front and this giant, I'm just like, oh. Oh, that's a stud, just a freaking stud. I'm afraid the shot's forward though. Shoulder blade, or if I got in front of it, or what? He's, he's walking away now. <gasps> Doesn't look good. He's not hit where I wanted to hit him, nor is he hit where I was trying to hit him. But unfortunately, that's the perils of bow hunting, and you're going to go through it one time or another. Pulled up track. My hopes aren't real high, I'll be honest. However, the good about the in front of the shoulder, that neck area, you know, you got some things that you could catch there, like the carotid artery, the jugular vein that you could be in the chips, but you got a lot of stuff up there that pff, you're out of the ball game and he's probably chasing does tomorrow. Uh, I, I just don't know. I'm gonna probably try to call. We got, we got a couple guys with dogs, like real deal dogs. I'm gonna put a phone call in from them. I'm sure they're swamped. We knew if this deer was dead, we had to find him. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. You owe it to the deer. So the first phone call I made was to a buddy named Doug Fink, non-typical deer recovery services. Hi, well, we are about eight hours removed from this morning's hunt. We didn't even look today. We looked just a little bit. I mean, we looked for two minutes, saw some blood. We have really been wanting to give a dog a try anyway. And, and with this very questionable shot, we thought this is our best chance. Doug shows up about three o'clock and he's got a yellow lab named Cash. And old Cash, I, I'd be afraid to know how many deer this dog has found. And the blood's not bad. I mean, that rage cuts a big hole in him. Even if it cut him up front, it's probably, it's, it's all or none. And you know, 100 yards, 200 yards, now we're probably four to 500 yards away from the initial hit. Still have got spotty blood and all of a sudden I hear, got him. Is he in there? That is awesome. Oh man, That's thank awesome. you. Good job, big dog. Good job, buddy. November the 7th, Illinois. It is a day we'll remember for a long time. This is a deer we call Stickers. We had a couple encounters with him last year and he got the pass. This year, not so fortunate. We got the name Stickers because he had a couple big hooks on both of his G2s. He came in behind a doe. We're talking 40 yards, just as fast as he could fly in there. I put the mission crossbow to work. Unfortunately, it hit a branch and the arrow hit a lot more forward than it should have. Put a phone call in to Doug Fink and he brought cash out a few hours later, 350 yards, and this old guy was at the end of the blood trail. 177 inch giant, couldn't be more happy, and I'm so glad that 2020 is ending on a positive note. 
I was able to get my daughter on her first deer ever at nine years old. She killed a doe and we did just kill the biggest deer on the farm, 177 inch Illinois giant in the hardwoods, in a tree stand in Illinois. I mean, it does not get any better than that. Goal has been checked. Next up, my sidekick, Mr. Kaliser. Well, fast forward about a month and we've had a great season so far. Second gun season in Illinois is approaching, so I decided the day before that second gun season began to see who was where, where the does were frequenting at the time, and what I saw in there was one of our shooters. The deer we called Krusty, it's actually a deer my daughter and I saw in the summer and she named it based on some SpongeBob SquarePants show just because he had a little crab claw on his end. So I called Kyle real quick. I said, hey Kyle, I think I can see one of our shooters out in our, our cornfield right now. Um, I think maybe we need to make a play in that field tomorrow night. Well, it's December 3rd. It's the first night of the second gun season in Illinois. So we're sitting there and I look across the way about 300 yards and I see a deer we call Squiggy. He looks good to you. He's about 350 yards away. Unfortunately, he does not come into shooting distance. <laughs> And we're like, man, we have got to, we have got to figure out a, a, a way in which we can get on this deer. December 4th, it's the second day of the second gun season in Illinois. And what we've done is we've had a wind change. And now the night before where we were on the creek side, that wind is no good. So actually Kyle gets down into the field early and, and puts a blind up off a point where we feel that if the wind stays consistent down on this bottoms, these deer shouldn't be able to make us. Oh, we are settled in. We just dropped a blind in. We just set it up, cut limbs and brushed it in. And it's the second day of gun season. And you'd say, I said to yourself, well, that, that's not very smart or prepared. And you would be right, it's not very smart or very prepared. But it's something we kind of decided that we had to do. We have got mossy oak biologic clover plus back there. It's about a half acre. We have got standing egg beans We've got Mossy Oaks new forage beans right here. And we thought most of the deer would be out and up there, but they're still milling this picked corn. And then they move over into it. So they start right here and then they kind of funnel their way. So we weren't prepared for that. There are a lot more on this corn than we thought before they hit those beans. The wind has been now going west, south last night. But west should be good as long as we dodge the does. That is the name of the game tonight, dodge the does by enough time that he comes out. A little bit of luck would go a long way. Well, time's going by, there's a feel in the air. I can just kind of sense that this is going to be a good thing. And sure enough, I look off to the timber in the north and there's one of our shooters coming out. And the scrapper coming out here. I immediately recognize him as Krusty because of the crab claw that he has. If everything plays right, he's about 300 yards right now, so it's just a matter of time. He's closing the distance, slowly but surely closing the distance. Ideally, for a slug gunner like myself, I'd like him to be 150 yards and less. That's 190 yards. I think you Is got that him. what you asked me to do, brother? I think you got Is it. that what you asked me to do? <laughs> Second gun, baby. Second <sighs> gun. Freaking love it. Boom. Believe it or not, that is a deer we call Krusty. He's got a, he has a nine pointer crab claw, probably 150 inch deer. <laughs> and what's kind of special about that, it is the one deer we had this summer that my daughter and I sat up on and we had him in the field at about 70 or 80 yards. So she's gonna be pumped when she knows I just dropped him. That is not the deer we were chasing. Um, last night we had Squiggy, which is a huge seven pointer we had in here. 
But that is an even better deer, baby. <laughs> Another one of our shooters has just hit the dirt, and I feel really good about this track job. We are back in the Winchester partition gold. Boom. Baby, let's go get him. We knew who this deer was. My daughter named this deer. We go up to him. It's a beautiful nine-pointer. Daddy likes oh, him. Oh, yes. Look at that eye. Uh-huh, that's wicked. Look at that eye. From fighting, look at that gouge. Oh, my gosh. We are thrilled beyond belief. I have now tagged out in Illinois. I've got two tags in Illinois, and I've punched them both. And that is a first in a long time for me, and I am just absolutely thrilled. Could not be more excited. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Some there, man. That's right. Good stuff, Maynard. Well, here we are. We are with Krusty Crab Claw, a nine point that we were fortunate enough to catch up with. And we call him Krusty. Well, because why? Because he's off of SpongeBob SquarePants. SpongeBob oh. SquarePants. There's a fast food restaurant called Krusty Crab. We lost touch with them the last month, but Kyle and I did a scouting mission Wednesday night, the night before second gun season started, and we saw this guy working, uh, working a few does into our biologic forage plot. Um, and we just, we needed the right wind. We had a southwest that finally went west. We did an old drop and plop on a muddy ground blind and it put us in the hammer hole. We had him at 135 yards. The Winchester SX3 barked along with, accompanied with the partition gold three inch and it made for a deadly combination because this guy didn't go anywhere. And uh, I can tell you right now, I am just thrilled to be tagged out in Illinois for the first time in a very, very long time. Next week on Winchester and Drew's Natural Born, we'll head to the great states of Illinois, Missouri, and Texas as Forrest Bonin, Coon Dog, and Wade Robinson all look to harvest some great whitetails. It is sure to be a whirlwind episode, so be sure to tune in right here next week on DoD TV. We're adding new videos every week, so make sure to click that subscribe button and check out all of our amazing content. This episode of DoD TV was brought to you by Sportsman's Channel, your home for everything red, wild, and blue.